Hello. I wanted to share a bit today about uh, my latest project, what I've been working on. This mess of wires here is a Synker EDM. If you're not familiar with what Synker EDM is, uh, you may have heard of wire EDM. It's the same process. Basically, it's a way of machining conductive materials using the part between the tool and a workpiece. You charge up a capacitor to a relatively high voltage and discharge it between your tool and the workpiece, the part that you're trying to machine. And when that spark jumps, it actually is so hot that it vaporizes a little bit of the material. And you do this thousands of times per second. And over time, you can kind of actually form or, or machine away your material. It has some really great advantages. Unlike traditional machining, like milling or turning on a lathe, uh, because your tool and your workpiece don't actually touch each other, it's just the spark, there's not really any force applied. So it has the potential to be very high precision. Uh, your parts won't deform under that load. I'm certainly not going to achieve high precision with this crude setup I have here today, uh, but commercial EDMs can, can achieve very high tolerances. It also has the advantage that it can machine basically any conductive material. Um, so you wouldn't really be able to mill something like tungsten carbide uh, just because it's so hard, but with EDM, that's not a problem at all. As long as your material is conductive, it almost certainly can be machined. Uh, so stuff like this, like a, a tungsten carbide end mill, uh, no problem. You've probably seen the classic test, uh, if you're familiar with EDM, where you can cut holes through a hardened steel razor blade like this, not a problem at all. Uh, and of course, you know, softer materials too, like mild steel, that works fine. This is aluminum, that works fine. Uh, this is an example of one of the things I've cut before, this little butterfly. If you search for EDM on YouTube, uh, especially DIY or homemade EDM, there's a number of different videos of people who've made setups like this, uh, and they're all pretty crude. They're all what's called an RC type EDM, and they don't really have any control over the spark. Basically, you just charge up a capacitor, and whenever the voltage gets high enough, it'll just charge across your workpiece, uh, and then the process will repeat. Unfortunately, none of them are really documented that well, so I'm hoping to show you in more detail what I have here. Another thing is that they're generally tuned very poorly. There's a lot of inconsistency and in sparking, a lot of sputtering, and they don't cut that well, in my opinion. Um, and that's something that I've been really working to try and dial in as well to show you. The professional EDM machines actually use everything, do everything solid, the solid state switches. Um, they have very expensive, very high speed, high DVTs that can actually regulate the current during the duration of the spark. You know, microseconds long um, and this is really great for performance but it's very expensive this machine that I'm working on here today is kind of a hybrid system that I've never seen before and I think it's a really good compromise between simplicity for something that you can do at home uh, but effectiveness and the way it works is I'm not controlling the actual characteristics of the spark itself so once the spark occurs the characteristics are still limited by the capacitor the voltage and the capacitance and the system resistance of the wires and everything. Um, but I do have an Arduino that is controlling everything that determines the spark frequency as well as the spark duration. And that has the advantage that it's a lot more efficient. So uh, I still do have tool wear, but it doesn't require as much power, the whole, the whole machine. And because I can achieve a faster spark rate, I can machine metal down a lot faster than a traditional RC EDM machine. I'll give you an overview of what all these wires are doing. First of all, I have 120 volts AC coming in from the wall, going into this variac. This is not really necessary, uh, but I have it here just to drop the voltage down a bit, down to about 70 volts AC, and that just limits the peak current in the system in general, uh, just to be a little safer and a little cooler. Everything runs um, a little bit better and a little bit more slowly. Uh, then I have a solid state relay. That's just an on-off switch so that uh, when the Arduino is not doing anything, when it's not cutting, that can turn off the high voltage safer. That then gets rectified and charges up this bulk smoothing capacitor. That charges up to about 100 volts DC or so. That then passes through this resistor here. Uh, this is actually a heating element, but I'm just using it as a resistor. It can handle about 300 watts, so uh, it, get, it does get warm, but it won't harm it. Uh, and that then charges up the bulk discharge capacitor, the main discharge capacitor here. This is just under about one microfarad of uh, film capacitance. Film capacitors are great because they can handle the repetitive high discharge rate that you need for EDM. 
That then goes through a high-speed MOSFET circuit with some protection uh, that's controlled by the Arduino. And the output of that from the plaster is directed across the tool and the workpiece that I'm touching. I've done some experimentation with different sizes and types of capacitors for the main discharge capacitor here. One microfarad seems to be a really good value, uh, maybe even a little on the high sides. The more capacitors you have, it will cut a little bit faster, but it also is a lot louder. It consumes a lot more energy, um, and it's a lot less efficient. And the main thing, though, is that it leaves a much rougher surface finish. So each spark that jumps across is delivering a lot more energy. The speed food really isn't all that great, I've found, though. I think that's just because, although it's each spark is, has more energy, it takes longer than to charge the capacitor up again, and you don't get as high of a spark rate. So I was using this capacitor before. This is 120 microfarad, uh, and it works, but um, it leaves a very rough texture, uh, like a very aggressive bead blast, and uh, it gets very hot. With this one microfarad capacitor, it runs a lot more smoothly. The actual arcing is a lot more stable, as you'll hear. And the surface finish that it leaves is really nice. It has a very fine um, texture, like a very fine bead blast, or almost like a sanded texture, which is really nice. As I mentioned, the output from the Spark and the MOSFET is directly across the tool and the workpiece. And that's controlled by the Arduino. But the Arduino also controls the stepper motor for the Z-axis. And it also measures the voltage across this capacitor. So it has a pretty fancy algorithm that actually measures the voltage across the capacitor, it does some calculation, and it determines whether to move the stepper motor up, down, or do nothing. And it does that in a loop of about 25 kilohertz. The stepper motor resolution is set to about 600 nanometers right now. Uh, that sounds like a really small distance, but it actually could be smaller. Uh, this certainly works, um, but it doesn't actually give me as much control as I'd really like. I have the voltage threshold in the Arduino, uh, the voltage for the, the discharge capacitor is set to about 60 volts right now, and that seems to work really well. I think 60 volts is large enough that it will reliably initiate a spark between the two, the two uh, materials, the two pieces, but it's low enough that the actual spark distance and the, the clearance around your tool is not too large. Um, you're getting uh, about 50 to 100 microns of gap per side of my tool, which is pretty good, I think, for such a crude setup. When you're cutting, a lot of, of particles, the, the waste metal that is removed uh, accumulates in the tank. Commercially, you need really high-end, really fancy filtration systems. Not only do these filter out the particulate in the water, but they also uh, make sure that the, the conductivity of the water remains constant, because that's very critical to getting good tolerances on your part. I don't have any of that, um, so definitely my tolerances aren't going to be great, but also junk accumulates in the water. I'm using just distilled water. Um, most commercial EDM operations use some sort of oil like kerosene, which seems a little sketchy to me. Uh, not only messy, but maybe a little dangerous. So I'm just using distilled water, and I put about a gallon in here, and that'll run for about uh, 12 to 18 hours uh, before it just gets too dirty and the conductivity rises too much for it to be uh, working that well. And then I'll just clean out the tank and I'll just replace it with new water. I also have a small water pump in here. Uh, it just circulates the water within this tank, but one of the things that it does is it helps flush out the spore from the cut. So every few seconds as it's cutting, the tool will raise and that fluid flow will help wash out all the debris and then it will lower back down and continue cutting. So I want to start the cut today. This is the material that I want to cut. This is just mild steel, nothing fancy today. What I've done is I've drilled and tapped a hole in the side so that I can attach my positive electrode. And this will go down in the tank. And then this is going to be my tool today. This is made from quarter inch plate copper. So I cut out these shapes on an abrasive water jet. And then I applied solder paste and heated it and actually soldered all these parts together. So that gives me both mechanical and good electrical contact. This height here is about 12 millimeters. Um, I do expect some tool wear, so I'm going to plunge this whole part about 12 to 15 millimeters deep, and I expect that the resulting depth of the cut will be about 8 to 10 millimeters. I'll give a quick demonstration here of the EDM running. I have my tool mounted, and I have my workpiece mounted. 
I filled everything with water and I have my pump primed and ready to go. So I'll start by turning on the Arduino and the water pump. There you go, I can see that that's running and I've got lights on the Arduino, so that's good. Then I'll come over here and I'll plug in the Arduino to my computer serial port. That will initialize and I'll open the serial monitor that will let me see the status of the machining as it goes. It also lets me send commands to the uh, EDM for basic control. So you can see now it's starting to report the voltage in the main capacitors. That looks good. So what I'll do is I'll turn on my Variac and I'm going to set the voltage to about 80 volts or so. That should work but it's not going to be a very aggressive cut. And then I'll come over here and I'll send the start command and it should start cutting. So you can see it's going down slowly and every few seconds it backs up because it's doing a flush. Uh, of course it's not cutting yet so that doesn't matter but let's watch. You can see all that black swarf that's coming off the cut. Those are very, very small, small particles of the steel and copper being worn away. It's been running for only three or four minutes now, and you can see already the water is starting to turn really dark black. It'll get a lot worse than this, and it seems to be okay. You can probably hear it still is cutting just fine. But it is interesting to note just how much waste is produced by this process. Here's a video from an early cut that I did of the butterfly. This just shows the sparking a lot better. You can hear and see that the sparks are a lot more aggressive on this cut, and that's because this one was using the larger capacitor. I think this was about 100 microfarad, and so it certainly works well, but it leaves a much uh, rougher surface finish. Here's the final result of the parts you saw in the video. This is the one with the very small discharge capacitor. You can see how fine of a texture this leaves. You can feel that it's textured, but it's very smooth. And you can see that the tool is significantly shorter now than when I started. It's probably about 70% of the height. But it fits in there perfectly. It's really satisfying to feel that. Just it is absolutely a perfect fit. There's no play at all. And here's the butterfly. I, uh, I surface ground the top, which is why it looks uh, really smooth and nice. But you can see that this one is actually quite a bit coarser, the, uh, the texture in the butterfly. This one feels more like an aggressive bead blast, which for certain applications would certainly be fine, or maybe even desirable. And then also just to show again that it's possible to cut hardened materials as well. This is a, a tungsten carbide end mill. You can see that I took a chunk out there, but I also cut this high aspect ratio slot straight through the, uh, the teeth. No problem. Well, I hope you enjoyed hearing about my project. If there's anything I missed, or if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.